Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Busy Moms Fitness, Nutrition, Mindset, and Accountability Community. We are here for our monthly free training, and I am super excited that we are finally back to talking about nutrition. So remember, every single month we change our topic of focus. Last month was mindset. This month we are back to nutrition. We are going to do some really fun and awesome kind of virtual cooking experiences. We've got one coming up this upcoming Tuesday, which I'll tell you more about here in a little bit. But before we go, jump all the way in, I know we've got some new people in the group, so I want to give a brief breakdown of what this group is and who this group is for. This group is for busy moms who are looking to expand on their physical, mental, emotional fitness, kind of all these areas, because what one of the things that I learned from being an in-person trainer is that when I was working with my clients one-on-one -on -one through just fitness, it was amazing. They were seeing results, but I found that we were having the same conversations or we were coming up against the same roadblocks every single time. And that's because we just couldn't work on all of the areas that needed addressing. So in this group, we address our physical fitness. We address our nutrition. We look at our mental fitness. We look at accountability. We look at our consistency. We try to create an all-encompassing plan that is successful for you. So each month we choose a different area of focus. Nutrition is very broad. So I do try that when nutrition does come up, we try to keep that, keep our free training a little broad, but also allow you to dive in a little bit deeper. So let me know if you're watching on Facebook right now, drop hashtag live in the comments. Let me know you are there. If you are watching the replay, whether it be on YouTube or you're in the Facebook group or wherever you may have found this replay, drop hashtag replay in the comments that you have available. And let me know who you are and where you're from and what brought you on and what, why are you taking time out of your day to listen? So with that, we're going to kind of get into, I'm going to give you some updates, some things that you can expect. I already kind of mentioned it earlier, but we're going to talk about some updates. Then we're going to get right into today's training. So these trainings are very quick. I try to keep them 20 minutes or less, and we put a ton of information in it. And the only thing that I ask is when you learn something, especially in these trainings, when I do provide a ton of information, do not try to go and implement everything. Pick one thing from the training that is going to resonate with you and stick with it and implement it and try it on. And if that doesn't work, try something different or come to me for help so I can see if I can help tweak it a little bit to fit you. So with that being said, some updates. Typically, we do a paid workshop. This month, we're not doing a workshop format. We are doing a uh, make dinner with me virtual cooking experience this upcoming Tuesday, June 11th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. So in this experience, what I want you guys to do is to grab your phone or to grab your laptop, pull up Zoom with us, and for $30, we're going to make dinner. I'm going to give you all those rest. I'm going to give you the two recipes that we're going to be making as well as some other bonus stuff. We're going to be making a full yummy chicken dinner with some garlic herb potatoes and some carrots and zucchini. So I've got a new recipe that we're going to try. And from there, we're also going to be not just talking about why we've chosen that dinner, but talking about other nutritional questions, giving you some tips and tricks when it comes to creating less dishes in the kitchen, like ways that we're going to prep things in a strategic order for a reason. So if you have any interest in that, you can do one of two things. You can either drop cooking in the comments below below, or you can click on the link that I'm going to paste in here right now, and you can sign up directly. So like I said, it is only $30. So with that being said, um, as soon as you sign up, you will get a private message from me with the recipes. So you can make sure you have time to grab the things that you would like. Um, and so that you can actually be part of it. If you know you can't be there the whole time, or you know you've got to make dinner a little bit earlier, but you still want to join and you still want the replay, so you can work through it, whatever that looks like. Um, if you have additional questions, shoot me a message or drop cooking below and I'll reach out and see if I can get those answered. If you're ready to just jump right in, click that link and sign up. So with that, today we're going to be talking about how to build a foundation in your nutrition one bite at a time. And I really liked the way that I wrote this for a reason is typically what happens is we get all of this nutrition advice and we try to go and do all of it. And for those of you who are new, you have probably not heard me talk about micro habits or little mini steps. I use a lot of terms in interchangeably, micro, mini, all of that. So one bite of a time was just another great way to put a spin on that of taking just one step. And the number one thing that I'm going to tell you to do before you take any of the advice today is 
we have to see a baseline. We have to have a good understanding and understand not just for ourselves, but in the future of where we want to go with our nutrition. So keeping a one week food log is the number one spot that you want to start before you go making any changes to your nutrition. This is something I work with clients with. I have clients that we do a one week food log and we look at it and then we address, or I have people in this group who just want me to audit their one week food log. I do either. So if you do a food log and you want me to look over it completely free, just send me a message with your food log and I will look over and give you some guidance on where to start. But as we go through some of this information, I want you to remember that before you take on a tip or before you go and implement or change your diet drastically, we need to know exactly where you are starting. So that one week food log is going to give us a good baseline of what is happening. The goal of your food log, though, is not to change the way you are eating because you know somebody may be looking at it. All of it's the only thing that it's meant to do is to create awareness around possibly what meals are you missing? Are you overeating? Are you undereating? Are you getting all the macronutrients or micronutrients you need? And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But all it's meant to do is create awareness for us to ask ourselves some questions and start to see holes. And one of the things that I do when I do this food log with people is I have you answer questions first before I give you feedback. Because I also like to know what types of things do you see in your own diet before I go and just give my perspective and my educational piece. So I always have you answer first so you get a really good idea. And then I come in trying to help fill those gaps a little bit more. So as we get into this, we are going to have three parts here. And part number one is just understanding the nutrition basics. And we're going to break it up into macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are things that our bodies need in large amounts. This is proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. If you've listened to any of my other trainings, I dive deep into these. If you go to the guide section in the Facebook group, you can go to the nutrition tab specifically, and you will find me deep diving into all of these. But I'm just going to give a quick overview that when we are building our nutrition, a solid foundation in our nutrition, we want to make sure that we are getting proteins, carbs, and fats, because right there, those are things that our body needs a large amounts of. Proteins are essential for building and repairing our tissues. They're found in meat, beans, dairy, and a lot of other things. Carbohydrates, those are our body's main source of energy. They're found in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, things like that. That list also can go very long. And then our fats. Fats are important for brain health and energy. Those, are, those can be found in avocado, nuts, and oils. So the number one thing when we look at a food log is we want to first see, are we missing any of these macronutrients? For instance, I have people that I've started working with or I've looked at their logs and we've noticed they don't have protein, a good source of protein, only but once in their day. And if that's the case, that is our first goal is to make sure that we're getting our macronutrients. After we feel like we've got a good foundation with those macronutrients, we then move on to our micronutrients reason we do that is because micronutrients are vitamins and minerals your bodies need in smaller amounts, but they are just as important. And our vitamins and minerals actually come from foods that we eat to fulfill that macronutrients section, if that makes sense. So for instance, vitamins such as vitamin C is found in citrus fruits. Well, fruits are a carbohydrate. And vitamin D is found in dairy. Well, that can fall into that protein category. So you're probably already getting those. And those are really small areas that take a little bit more deep diving. So once we've mastered those, micronutri those macronutrients, we then look at those micronutrients. And then that second one is minerals, such as calcium, which is also found in dairy, and then iron, which is found in red meat and spinach are just two examples. So those are things that you may already be consuming. And if we start with those micronutrients, it's a we tend to just eat the things that fulfill that when really we want to fill, fulfill all those categories first, then dive into those, mic those micros. <laughs> so that is part number one, is just understanding, the, just understanding the basics of nutrition, protein, carbs, and fats. I dive deeper into that in some earlier trainings in the guide section. Feel free to go check those out. If you have additional questions, drop them. If I get, a, if I get at least two or three questions, I'll just do a quick live Q&A and give everybody the answers. So if you have any specific questions on macronutrients or micronutrients, drop them in the comments, and I'll just do another live Q&A to go over those. Part two is this is where we're going to talk about some practical tips for that busy lifestyle. 
So once we've built the foundation and we know, okay, I'm getting my carbs, I'm getting my fat, I'm getting my protein, I'm having regular meals, I'm knowing when to eat, all of that. Some of the things that can come up is, okay, I have a busy day. How do I manage that? Or, okay, I don't have a kitchen. How can I manage to get those macronutrients in when I don't have access to all the things I normally would? So this is kind of where we're going to come into some practical tips. And number one practical tip is meal prep and planning. And meal prep and planning in the long run will save you time, energy, money, and decision making in the long run. So a lot of times we think of meal prep and planning as that thing where you go grocery, you create all your meals, you go grocery shopping, you cut up and you make all your meals for the week and they sit in those Tupperware containers inside your fridge. That can be a way of meal prep and planning, but it doesn't have to be. I actually teach a seven day meal prep and planning boot camp that walks you through my step-by-step -step process that works for everybody and can be tweaked based on your lifestyle. And I, I have opened the doors to that. So if you want access to that, just drop meal in, in the comments below and that will give you more details on what that entails and how to sign up. But in the step-by-step -step process, we wanna look at what area what is that next step? So taking that first bite-sized step in that meal prep and planning process. First thing is deciding what meals you're gonna have for the next week and when you need to have meals for. One of the biggest things that I see is people create all these meals and they're not actually home or they know they're eating out with a friend but they've created a meal for it. So really creating meals that work and look like they need to based on your calendar schedule. So that's the first step. After that, we move into making sure you have your foods on hand. And then prepping and preparing can look different depending on what that looks like. One of my favorite is at the start of the week, I do try to make at least one source of protein readily available for grab and go throughout the week. But also if I have fruits and veggies, for instance, grapes, if grapes do not get washed and put off the vine right away when I buy them, they will probably sit in the bag and start to get old. So knowing that what my habits are, my planning and prep looks different. And in that boot camp, I walk you through a step-by-step -step process of what all that looks like. You also get one-on-one -on -one feedback and guidance from me for an entire week taking you through that process. So if you have interest in learning more about that or you want to jump into that course or workshop or boot camp right away, whatever that is, whatever word resonates with you, just drop meal in the comments below and I will make sure to drop that, send you a link for that. The second tip that we want to remember is smart snacking or your grab bag. So when we think about our carbs, our fat, and our protein, a lot of times we think about when we sit down and we have meals. And it's awesome. That's where we want to think. But we also have to be realistic in the sense of we're not always at home in front of the fridge, in front of a stove, able to sit down and have the meal. So we have to think of on-the-go snacks and meals that we can always have with us. And smart snacking or grab bag. I like to use the term grab bag and I've got clients who are using this with their kids too and it's a really great concept to teach is you keep kind of whether it's a container or an actual lunch pail in your cupboard and also in your fridge with all the things that you can easily just run out the door. If you had no time to put together a balanced snack that had carb, fat, and protein, you had things in each of those bags that would get you that balance. So for instance, in the fridge, you could have string cheese, Greek yogurt, um, those little P3s. It could look a little bit like that. In a cupboard, you could have tuna packet, beef stick, some crackers, um, nuts, a protein bar, some protein powder. So thinking through what are some great options that one item may not fulfill your carb, your fat, and your protein, but you may be able to throw a few different items together based on your grab bags to have a very well-balanced meal. And that takes us into tip number three here when we think about practicality, is creating balanced meals as best as we can whenever we can. And I have found that the easiest way to do this is to think about what my protein option is first and then mix my carb and my fat second. Reason being is I used to always figure out what my carb was first and then I felt like I was pigeonholed in. Like when I had pasta, I was like spaghetti. Whereas if I say ground beef is my protein, I can give myself a variety of options. We could do burgers, we could do meatballs, we could do spaghetti, we could do meatloaf. Like that can change because I find I have more options and my brain's a little bit more creative when I start with that protein option. Also what that does is it helps us prioritize that protein in our diet, which is something we all tend to lack. 
um, especially after the age of 35, we start to lose muscle density. So we want to make sure that we are growing that, that we are getting stronger, that we are growing our muscles and protein is what is needed for that to happen. So making sure that you have a good balance of everything, whether it's in your snacks or your meals or both, even in the morning when you have your breakfast, making sure that you have balanced meals, starting with what that protein source is first. And then number three, some of the common challenges that I hear people face. So I'm going to kind of address those here so you can kind of get some ideas of like, yeah, Morgan, I've been thinking that the whole time. So number one is time management and managing your time effectively can help you stick to your healthy habits. But I know we all have a ton going on. Life is busy. It's chaotic. And sometimes swinging through the drive through is the only thing that we can wrap our head around. One of the things that does help with that is that we're going to take it back up to the last the last area, the last section, which is meal planning and prepping, having those grab bags. And if we can manage our time just in 30 minutes to make sure once a week to make sure we've got those things on hand, that will help you in the long run. Making sure that if we have a busy week, can we put time aside to batch cook a little bit? Maybe it means one week we are eating out of pre-made Tupperware meals that we made on Sunday because we know the week is crazy. I know a lot of you, your kids end school this week and next week starts summer camp. Schedules are different than they were for the last couple months. So with that, do you have all the things ready so that they can pack their own lunch or you can pack their lunch with ease without having to feel like, oh, okay, we need to just like grab something on the way and you're going to eat that. So making sure that we are thinking ahead is going to help and managing your time is going to help you be more productive and help you stay on track. And that just really takes it back to that meal prep and planning, creating whatever system you want or one that works for you. But if you don't have a system, I highly recommend taking the seven day meal prep and planning bootcamp to at least give yourself a system to follow. And it can be tweaked based on your lifestyle. So it's not something that's set in stone. The other challenge that I run into is I have moms and people tell me that their kids are picky eaters or their husbands are picky eaters or even they're a picky eater. And that can be tough because I find vegetables are something people don't like very much of, or they only like it when it's covered in some sort of sauce or some sort of cheese, whatever that is. So creating some of that variety can be challenging when you have some picky eaters in the house. And let's be honest, you don't want to cook yourself a meal and then cook three other meals for everybody else. You want to be able to cook this, the thing for everybody. And also when you start eating the same thing, it makes you it makes life easier saves you time, and it allows a little bit more flexibility on what you guys can buy and what everybody will kind of test out. So I like that, but it's not always, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work because everyone's got different flavor palettes and they don't always want the broccoli the way you have it. So one of the biggest things that I suggest when it comes to picky eaters is if you are able to blend your veggies in like your sauces or soups, um, people won't even notice them. That's a really great way, like in red pasta sauce, throwing peppers and things like that in there is a really good way to hide veggies. Um, mixing cauliflower rice with normal rice, that's another great way to kind of mix in the veggies without people knowing. Um, the other thing that I have found is it may not be the food itself that they don't like, but it's the way it's being cooked. And I mean that in the most sincere way, but I, we used to have boiled Brussels sprouts growing up and I used to hate them. Now I roast my Brussels sprouts and I love Brussels sprouts. So a lot of food has different flavors when we cook in different ways. So if you find that nobody likes it when you steam it or when you boil it, okay, can we roast it? Can we grill it? Are there different ways that we can prepare the food that they may like? I've found that with my nanny family. If I do bro if I do green beans one way, they're not a huge fan, but if I do it the other way, the kids love it. So it's all about finding what combinations go together to make that food more appealing. It tends to be a little bit more flavor, it tends to be something that I found the kids like a little bit more rather than just very plain. And it's just easy to throw something in the microwave, but if they're not eating it and they don't like it, finding some other ways to prep those vegetables so that they will actually eat it. Um, another thing that is also fun when they are little, and I find I've got another client, she's got three boys all under the age of six, and we were talking about this, and making it making as much their size as possible. So it looks like their little portion size, and yes, it is more work, but even like 
we do mini quiches instead of doing it in the big muffin tins get the baby muffin tins so then they have like little mini quiches things like that that make them feel like it's their size instead of this big adult meal that just kind of looks intimidating so that's one way to do that for kids picky eaters it is a big thing but think about is it actually the food they don't like or is it the way it's being prepared and don't be afraid to try something new i try all sorts of weird combos and most of the time we like them sometimes we don't and i just don't make it again and then finally staying motivated is one of the other things that i hear people say is like i've gotten on track with nutrition i'm doing really well and a couple months go by and we feel like we're not seeing success or we feel like we should see more success than what we are and then we start to decline well, this is where you have to make sure that you are setting goals that are realistic for you and slowly building and changing your habits. Like I said in the beginning, when we do your food log, if we look at it and we realize that everything, for instance, needs to be changed, we're not gonna change everything at once. We're gonna pick one small area, we're gonna build it up so you feel confident, and then we're gonna add something else. And then we're gonna add something else, and it takes time. The reminder that I always like to give people is you've been ha you've been doing these habits, let's say for 20 years, depending on when clients come to me, 20, 30, 40 years, and now you wanna start changing those habits. It's gonna take more than 21 days, it's gonna take more than 30 days, it's gonna take more than a year to really engrave, ingrain some of these habits that you have had for a really long time. It's gonna take listening to your body and all of that. So staying motivated, one of the best things I can do is celebrate your progress along the way. Make sure you are celebrating this community. Find other people who are trying to reach the same goals as you. Hire a coach, join our inner circle. Be part of a community that also knows these struggles because it does feel like we're going at it alone sometimes. So add some variety to your meals as well is the last little part that I have for staying motivated because when you eat the same chicken and veggies and rice every single day it gets really boring and it makes you want to go out and eat food that tastes better make better tasting food at home it will keep you more motivated to want to continue cooking and feeling good and eating foods that make you feel good so to recap a little bit of today, we talked about one, food logging is your number one step before you step into making any of the changes I talked about today. Keep a food log, send it to me, and let's figure out where your next step is. Then we want to look at, and we talked about understanding the nutrition basics, macronutrients, micronutrients, why we need macro versus micro, and where we should start. Then we went into some practical tips for the busy lifestyle, but that included meal prep and planning, your grab bag, having balanced meals. And then we talked about some of those challenges that we may face. And I know we talked very minimally, minimally, but on our cooking experience, we're gonna kind of talk about these a little bit more. That's gonna be the fun part is I want you to, if you are somebody who enjoys a cocktail or a glass of wine, bring that, bring a mocktail, or we're just gonna sit and cook and have fun and talk a little bit more about these and kind of a big Q&A as well as we're cooking and I'm teaching you things if there's a point where we've got a little dull moment you've got okay how what would be a better way to cook this or okay how do you go around this it's kind of an open Q&A very casual super fun so feel free if you would like to join us on Tuesday from 6 to 7 30 p.m June 11th just this upcoming Tuesday remember you can either click the link in the comments below or you can drop the word cooking in the comments and I will make sure to reach out to you with a little bit more details if that's what you're looking for and finally, as we kind of wrap up today, we talked about a lot. If you are feeling overwhelmed and you want to talk and just figure out what your next step is, even though we broke it down, if you're still feeling uneasy, drop build in the comments. I'll reach out. We'll just jump on a phone call, see if I can ease your mind, get you a really good starting spot. And we can, if working together is something we want to do, we can talk about that. Or we can just talk about the next step and you can continue to stay in the free group and learn all the things that come each month. There's a ton of extra trainings in there. Like I said, if you go to the guide section, nutrition, I have talked about nutrition a ton. So go back through there, watch some of the things that are in there, get a little bit more education that way and bring me all of your questions. So with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Let me know if there's anything that you need at all. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next month or on Tuesday for our Make Dinner With Me virtual cooking experience. I'll see you all then.